Last two years have been really good, really successful, um, and it's been an incredible journey to get there. Uh, fourth evolution of the RB5 this year, so obviously pressure to try and stay there if we possibly can. Um, difficult task. We've we've lost the exhaust technology um, with the restriction exhaust outlet position that we were able to develop and perhaps be ahead of the pack on over the last couple of years, and that's led to a big rethink over the winter. Um, whether that will affect us more than other people is difficult to know, of course. We designed the RB7 last year's car around that exhaust position, and we're probably the only people to do so. So it may be that we've lost more than other people through that. Um, only time will tell. It'd be good to get out some testing, uh, see where we get to. Regulation restrictions like the loss of exhausts um, are a bit frustrating in truth because they are exactly that, they're restrictions. They're not giving you opportunities or avenues particularly, they're just closing your door. Um, so regulation changes I enjoy, regulation restrictions I rather lament. RB7, as I said, was designed around the exhaust. Um, this year, knowing that that exhaust position from last year would be taken away, we've had to go back and look at how we had developed the car through the last somewhere between one and two years with the side exit exhaust and try and, if you like, make sure that routes that we'd taken that were only suitable for that exhaust position, we now have to re-evaluate. Probably one of the key things there has been the rear ride height. Um, the exhaust allowed us to run a very high rear ride height. It's much more difficult um, without that to sustain a high rear ride height. So we have to go back down and have to redevelop that, the car around that lower height. The um, restriction nose height, which is a, a maximum height just in front of the front bulkhead, hasn't really changed the chassis ve shape very much. We've kept more or less the same chassis shape, but had to drop the nose just in front of the front bulkhead which, in common with many other teams, has led to this, um, I think we'd probably say slightly ugly looking nose. We've, we've tried to style it as best we can, but it's um, not a feature you'd choose to put in were it not for the regulation. I would say RB8 is the fourth generation of what started as a 2009 car, the RB5. Um, so I guess this is the the great-grandson of that car. I've been lucky enough through my career to have had a, a good amount of success. Um, and if people often ask, am I going to retire soon or whatever? The answer is, as long as I keep enjoying it, then I'd like to keep going. Um, what really fascinates me about it is, is the technical challenge, the, the fact that we've moved at a very high, fast pace, so every two weeks we're out being evaluated, which if you're doing well is great, if you're doing poorly is painful, but at least you know where you are and you, you get to see the product of your work very quickly. So I really enjoy working with my colleagues, my fellow engineers here at Milton Keynes, with the drivers of course at the track. Um, it's a, it's a a job that has many facets and many varieties, but you always get that immediate feedback and that's what really motivates me about the job. I think we have a great driver lineup. Sebastian, obviously double world champion now. Um, I think matured tremendously through last year. In 2010 he, he drove a great season, showed immense talent and thoroughly deserved to be world champion at the end of it but it was a it was a rocky year um, he was a very young lad he showed incredible uh, determination and ability to learn from his mistakes like all people he made mistakes through that year but 
he never made them twice. And I think that ability to learn from his mistakes and to always be searching and trying to improve really showed in his driving last year. Um, he really made no mistakes last year. He was aggressive when he needed to be. He was patient when he needed to be. Really showed incredible maturity. And there's no reason to think that that won't continue. Mark had a, a rocky ride last year. Um, through 2010, he, he had a very good season. He was unlucky in many ways not to be world champion at the end of that year. 2011, he initially, I think, struggled a little bit to understand how to use the Pirelli tyres. Took him a little bit of time to adapt to them. He's had a great winter. He's tremendously fit. He's, he's um, really looking forward to the start of the season. And I, I think uh, he'll be one to look out for this year, I hope. team's still a, a relatively young team. We've, we've come a, a long way in a very short period. Um, had a great deal of success over the last two or three years. But we still occasionally show our, our youth. Um, we still occasionally make mistakes, which hopefully it's like the, um, the swan. It looks, looks graceful on the top, but there's a lot of action going on underneath. So we're still learning. Um, but I think the fact that we are a young team with tremendous spirit and determination is great. It means that we do learn and we do try to, to evaluate and continually criticise ourselves and see how we can improve. So I would hope that with the confidence of the last few years and our steady improvement, we can, we can keep maintaining and keep learning. People often ask, just before the new car runs, what's the expectation for this year? And my answer is always, I have absolutely no idea. We know what we've done through the winter. We know how we've developed the car, um, but we have absolutely no idea what everybody else has done. It's with the regulation changes and restrictions, then it's, it's quite a different game to the end of last year. So have we made as much improvement as others, more, less, impossible to know. Um, so it's always with trepidation that we start pre-season testing. And pre-season testing itself is, is very difficult to read from. If we're hopelessly uncompetitive to another team, then we'll probably realise it. Um, if there's two or three of us that look broadly similar, then it'll be very difficult to pick actually who is the quickest out of those. So it won't be until we get to Melbourne qualifying that we'll really get more of a feel for it. To be recognised by the Queen with an OBE is, is um, very flattering. Particularly proud of the fact that it's for engineering achievement. I think so often engineers in the UK are overlooked and that's a shame given our proud roots through the Victorian area of, of developing industry and technology engineering. Um, so real pride actually that uh, I've been awarded that and a tremendous thank you to everybody who feels that's been appropriate. I've, I've had an enormously enjoyable career and to be recognised that and to say to be recognised as an engineer is, um, gives, a, gives a very good feeling. <laughs>